Hey, what is going on guys? My name is Lynx and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program where today we're going further out than we have ever gone before. So, I'll be honest, this mission is going to be quite difficult. The rocket that I've made is rather strange. It's already wibbly and wobbly, which is probably not good. So, when I, when I was testing this out, I knew which part was doing this and I forgot to actually assign it. So, I gotta find it. Which part is doing it? Which one is it? It's that one. There we go. <laughs> but yeah, this rocket is a complicated one. It's in multiple stages. As you can see, there's actually two decouplers in one stage two engines in one stage and that is that is planned don't worry about that but essentially we're going to Vasto and for those of you who don't know Vasto is an ice planet it looks pretty much like a snowball so it is quite an interesting world it's also got some interesting surface features that some of you might like to see which is why I'm actually going there for science for the contract and for the nice pretty views now then I've checked this time I don't have the gravity mod installed so don't worry about that <laughs> and we're coming up on stage separation here we go it didn't take out the wings, which is a surprise actually. But this is probably my most presentable looking rocket that I've actually made yet. So I'm excited to see how it does. And it will be a, a bit bit ironic if, it, if it's an epic fail. I'll be honest, I'm a little bit stupid. So I've redone the launch and this time I have three Kerbals. <laughs> and that is a really nice looking gravity turn. I'm going to start burning out now. And it looks like we might get quite a nice looking orbit. All right, now to reveal what's in the fairing. A complicated craft to say the least. Now let's turn RCS off because I am going to be needing them. Now then, we have the transfer stage which will get us part of the way to Vasto. Not quite all of the way but we've got another transfer stage with a lot more fuel. After that we've got the nuclear stage which will allow this little station to move around Vasto. This will remain in orbit of Vasto and then this craft here, the lander, will land on the planet, come back up, refuel and all will be good. So for those of you who don't know too much about the mod Beyond Home, Vasto is a planet, it's an ice planet and it's the furthest planet away from the Barry Center. So the maneuver to get to Vasto is quite a hefty one. As you can see, almost 1,500 meters per second of delta V required to do that. And that is, that's going to be troublesome because that's going to eat into the next transfer stage, but still that transfer stage I wasn't expecting to have from the beginning. And it, I actually ended up adding that a little bit later on into the mission. So with a little bit of luck, we're all going to be still okay. Well, there's road retreating and Lua is nowhere. Where is Lua? What? what? That's a... That's that's Ash, that must be Ash. There it is. How did I miss that? <laughs> There's Lua. So, to get a relatively good encounter, I just need a mere 30.9 meters per second. And that's a very sensitive burn. One meter per second. Look at look my throttle. That's like barely anything. Eh, it's close enough. Actually, that's a better inclination than the maneuver. You know what? I'm happy with that. Now then, this is what Vasto looks like. It's a very nice looking planet. And you might have seen it in one of the thumbnails from one of the previous episodes because I did land on its moon. So if you've not seen that episode, be sure to check it out. Now then, to circularize around Vasto is going to take a hell of a lot of fuel. 934 meters per second. But that's going to be done with this transfer stage, which is absolutely fine. I could air brake, but I don't want to risk it, I don't think. And here we are above the surface of Vasto. Now, this is the interstellar planet if I've ever seen one. Look at that. That's so cool. <laughs> but man, there's some cool stuff in the mountains that I do want to show you guys if I'm able to actually land near some mountains because I really don't want to land. We, we all know how... <laughs> if we've all seen the last episode, we'll all know how well the landing on Lua went. That actually took me like six or seven attempts to get it to get it right. I had to cut a couple of them out for the sake of view duration, but <laughs> it was a challenge, I'm telling you. Okay, now that I can actually see what I'm doing, I gotta use this stack separator here. I have two. I have this one. And I'm away. And then I've got this one, I believe, as well. Oh, that looks very funky. Nothing a bit of time warping can't fix. <laughs> oh, I've got another one. Oh, and that one's gone as well. Perfect. <laughs> now my engines are ready to begin the landing. But this is the ship that I'm going to return to. It's got a docking port there and I have a docking port on the top. I also have RCS. I've not forgotten that. Without further ado, it's time to pick a landing spot right between the two mountains, which I'm sure is a fantastic idea. All right, it's looking promising. It just depends how fast I'm going to be going through the atmosphere. So I'm going to deploy everything I can. I'm going to deploy these chutes as well. I'm going to make sure they deploy really high up so that I've got some time to respond, some time to act in case I mess this up. Oh, the heating has begun. Okay, right, I need to set these to deploy relatively high up so that I have time in case stuff goes wrong. So far, so good. This should be a fairly safe speed and this is our landing spot just there, I think. And of course, my craft has flipped. It'll be all right. The parachutes will sort it out. I just have to focus on 
from slowing down. Now, air brakes would have been useful, but I, I didn't really think that this atmosphere would really need it because it's quite thin. It looks like I'm going to be landing right on a mountain, unfortunately. All right, these things should come in, start popping in in a minute. There they are. <laughs> there they are. And I, I'll talk a little bit more about them as I get down to the surface. But yeah, well, the heating has stopped and all I got to do is focus on facing the right way and uh, landing. You know, that would probably help. Landing in one piece intact. I just need to make sure that I can slow down enough. 4,000. There we go. Whew, I was starting to get a little bit worried that they wouldn't deploy. There we go. We're going to be landing in the thick of them. But we're descending at a nice rate of 29 meters per second. My thrust to weight ratio is still positive, although I reckon it will fall a little bit. So I've got to be careful. And look at that. <laughs> See, I say all the time how Beyond Home is meant to be like a fantasy planet mod. It's not meant to be overly realistic. It's meant to have a lot of really wacky ideas. And this is one of those occasions, I'd say. <laughs> all right, 24 meters per second. So it slowed down a little bit. Okay, I reckon I should start slowing down now. Just make sure that I don't hit the ground. My thrust to weight ratio is 0.83. What's my, what's my speed going to be? Six. Right, I can land on six. It's, it's going to be close because I want to save as much fuel as I can. Four three. I can land on two. And boop. Whoa. Now it looks like I'm going to have to do this good old remove from symmetry. Lower the strength of that one to 0.65. Raise the strength of this one to two. That'll do it. And hopefully this should work. That should work. There we go. And I, I, yeah, there we go. We've landed. <laughs> I don't know why that wasn't working before. I mean, this doesn't look too bad. And it's not like all the mass is up here either. It's all the way down here. Anyway, I think it's time to do some experiments. So unfortunately, I don't think I'll be able to plant a flag. Unless I can climb. Well, I'm quick saving in case I can't get back up at all. Oh yeah, I can climb that. That'll be fine. Now then, I think it's flag time. Plant flag. So, my most recent comment, because I said I'd do comments this time, my most recent comment was by this person called Amadius. If I say that right, I really hope I do. So if I comment baguette, I have a chance to be the chosen one. Well, you are the chosen one. <laughs> there we go. Amadius was here. All right, now, uh, now I need to somehow get back onto the craft. I'm not exactly sure how this one's going to work out, but I just spam F and it should, should be fine, you know? Just press F a couple of times, yeah. So far, so good. Still going well. Oh, brilliant. And back on the craft. And board. <laughs> Who needs ladders? So my thrust to weight ratio is now 1.21. I need to do a couple more experiments and then we'll head back up to the station. I don't have the big materials bay on me today because this would have been too heavy, but I have the gravity scan. 45 science. Now, I want to talk about these as I'm sure you're all asking. Yes, you can stand on them. You can land on them, but I am not skilled enough to actually successfully land a Kerbal there without parachuting them down and stranding them. These are atmospheric regular. So Vasto has an atmosphere when really it probably shouldn't have one as thick as it does. So these all regulate the atmosphere. Now who placed them there? That's not for me to say, that's for you guys to find out. But that's just what they do. They make its atmosphere thick. And we're off. It's going to be a very rocky start. This is going to be really difficult. Look how slow I'm going up. Oh man. And SAS isn't on for some reason. Even though it very clearly is, it's very clearly muck not working. Now the launch cost for Vasto is not too bad, but my thrust to weight needs to be higher than this. It has to be at least 1.5 really. So this might be a little bit of a push. Now I can do what I did with the Hydrus plane and I can just get the Kerbal out, take all the experiments and jet pack up. But I have to be traveling fast enough first. And with SAS off, this is even more difficult. Don't know why SAS is for some reason off. It's very clearly on. And if I toggle it, it doesn't make a difference. I'm just having to manually do the SAS for some reason. Now then, I'm starting to get relatively high up. So it's time to do the gravity turn. And all of the regulators are fading out of existence. <laughs> Aquaps is so far 17,000. We've used half the fuel. Now my thrust to weight ratio is now two, which is good. However, the atmosphere is still slowing me down. So I'm trying to get out as much as I can. I think I did the gravity turn a little bit too shallow. So I've been in the atmosphere for longer than I really should be. However, I still have the fuel to get into orbit and SAS seems to be working again. For some reason, stability assist isn't, but I can use the other buttons to, to do radial out and prograde. And there we are. See, look how much that apoapsis is falling. Vasto's atmosphere be thick. Separation of 0 0.6, 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.1. Ah, oh, 
Couldn't quite get it to zero, but there we go. Well, I wasn't expecting that to go as smoothly as it did. I still have a fair amount of fuel left on the lander. I'm not pushed for fuel on that craft either. I've still got that transfer stage. I've still got some nuclear engines, you know? All right, I'm going to do that cheat again because I have another Kerbal on this craft. I can face towards the target, which is... Where the hell are you? My math would say it's right there. It is right there. Hi. Now, I'm traveling slow enough to be able to actually just slow myself down with RCS. So if we both face each other... I'm obviously going to hit it. And... Boop! <laughs> See, that's such an easy way to dock. <laughs> so I have 109... Oh, actually, hold on. This engine, I think, is more efficient. Especially for the fuel it has. So if I shut down this engine and the second engine there, I should be able to enable crossfeed. I think that's a thing that I can do. This is the entire segment. This is what we launched into Warbit. This was our payload. We've still got the fairy base there. So in fact, we've not even got to the payload yet. But there we go. We've not even used this stage yet. And I'm, I'm about to. If I disable the crossfeed, the engines have no fuel fuel there, which means I have the experiments there, I can just tell this one to go screw itself. Goodbye. <laughs> you are the weakest link. Farewell. So now I've got 6,000 meters per second. Actually, I'll have a little bit more than that. We could go to Voss. You know what? You know what I feel like doing? Shall we go to Voss as well? I think we shall. We all love a bonus mission, don't we? And my thrust to weight ratio is three, so I just need to land in a flat area. Hello, guys. I'm back. <laughs> Didn't think you'd see me so soon, did you? Now oh, I'm getting very close. In fact, you can still see the shit sticks from here. <laughs> oh, look at that. Vasto rise. That's so cool. We're getting some good views to this episode. I just need to pick a good landing spot because this is the worst thing to possibly land on. What on earth is that? We're going to be coming ve Ooh, very close to the terrain, might I add. I feel like the best thing to do is cancel out my horizontal velocity completely before even attempting to land. In fact, no, that's not going to work at all because I'm just going to hit the ground. Hopefully, if I don't overshoot... No, oh, it's going to be on a slope, isn't it? I'm going to radial out, find a better place. No, I've just found the right spot. I have so much fuel. <laughs> I can do whatever I want at the moment. Reality can be whatever I choose. Here, this place looks good. And if it's not, well, I'll be damned. All right, it's landing time, I reckon. There we are. Horizontal velocity completely gone. And I got to make sure I land extremely delicately. So delicately, in fact, because landing on nuclear engines isn't something that anyone really wants to do. I'm going to land at 0.1 meters per second. That's the target, 0.1. And the last time I com commented on this, I really messed it up. So radial out. And I just got to... Oh, look at that horizontal velocity that I've got going there. There we go. That's perfect. Maybe not 0.1. Perfect. Perfect. Beautiful. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> That's brilliant. And it wouldn't be Voss without the shit sticks, would it? Plant flag. Now, my most recent subscriber was HYRI, if I can even pronounce that right. And there we go. That's for you. All right. It's time to go back. This mission has gone on long enough. It's time to get back to road. I can use as much RCS as I want as well because I'm not going to be really docking, am I? All right, let's try not to hit a stick. Yeah, let's not make the mistake I made last time. There we go. <laughs> I'm well above. I'm well above them now. All right, I have an orbit around Voss. I'll see you all on the way home. And hello, road. Looking incredible as always. It's time to re-enter. Now, my heat shield is facing this way, so I could face forwards, but that would be a stupid move, wouldn't it? I'm going to try and recover this, as I normally do. I'm going to try and recover this. It's it's not going to go well at all, but I, I want to just see if I can. You know, I've got a lot of fuel left in it, so I'm just going to keep slowing myself down. And, you know, worst thing comes to the worst is I decouple it and kill everyone on board. I didn't think of that, you know. There's, there's crew on this. Um... Maybe I will be deploying these parachutes after all. There is crew on this. <laughs> I forgot about that. Well, let's just hope things don't overheat then, shall we? Now I'm doing my signature move, the spin. You spin, it distributes heat seemingly perfectly. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. We do be spinning quickly though. All right, we've got some temperature bars going on the engines now. Nuclear engines already emit quite a lot of heat and doing it in the atmosphere is probably not the best idea, I'll be honest. You see, stonks. I just need to use as much as my fuel as possible. But I don't think I'm going to be able to land on two shoots, I'm going to be honest. But you know, there's there's a lot of craft between here and the crew. Yeah, a 10 meter per second impact is going to destroy the engines, but it should dampen it a little bit, so it might not tip over as much. Oh, you know what? They actually survived that. At least the parachutes... Come on, come on. Yes! Somehow everything survived. 
I I wasn't expecting that, I'll be honest. I wasn't expecting that at all. I was expecting quite the opposite. 542 science earned, don't mind if I do. We've also completed the contract of planting a flag on Vasto, earning us up to 2 million now, closer to unlocking the lower base. So anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this episode of Kerbal Space Program Beyond Home. If you enjoyed that, please leave a like, smash subscribe, because these episodes take quite a lot of effort to make. I'll see you all in the next episode.